to the Transatlantic Connection Show, bringing you artisan music and musicians, the vagabonds and adventurers building with the raw ingredients of folk music from both sides of the Atlantic. I am Chris the Bish Leiden, and this week our vagabond is Rob McHale, award-winning singer-songwriter from North Carolina, USA, back for part two of his chat with Steve Bonham. Rob shares two great songs with us this episode. On the scene this week, Steve chats to Charlotte Elizabeth, a music promoter working in the realms of Americana roots and country music, uh, and join Kev Moore from the house band, taking us further along his trip in the southern states of the USA. This is the Transatlantic Connection Show. Greetings, I am Chris the Bish Lyden. thanks for joining us. This episode we're so pleased to welcome back Rob McHale, one of our friends from the US, to talk about his music making and how he came to be where he is musically. Rob will share with us two great songs this episode too, you'll want to stick around for them. Rob is a great songwriter and a lovely performer just to get absorbed in. Um, on the scene this week we talk to Charlotte Elizabeth, a music promoter from England who works in the realms of Americana, roots, country music, all the styles that speak to the stories of real people. Uh, and join Kev Moore from the house band, The Long Road, as we have more stories of his road trip through the southern states of the USA and the musical influences on him as a musician. Remember, if you like what you see here and you'd like to support us so we can keep making more of it, please consider supporting us on Patreon. Patreon.com slash The Vagabond Way. So, now, on with the show. Today's Vagabond is Rob McHale in conversation with our own Steve Bonham. We first met Rob when he was over in the UK uh, and needed a PA for a gig in Derbyshire a few years ago uh, and we were able to oblige and the friendship has grown ever since with reciprocal trips for Steve back to the US. Um, Rob is a true craftsman, really invested in the stories he is trying to tell uh, and crafting a deep and thoughtful approach to telling those stories. He has a huge interest in the stories of real people uh, and the folklore, the legends of North Carolina, the people, the folk. Um, this is part two of a chat that Steve had with Rob um, a few weeks ago. Part one was back in episode one, if you want to check that out as well. So they dive right in on Rob's local stories uh, and real American history interests. So here we go. Rob, I've got to ask you about Tom Dooley. Uh, you are the professor Tom Dooley, you're the expert Tom Dooley, and uh, you know, you've know you've written songs about his... Uh, his, li his life and his legend. Um, how did you get here? How did you get? How did that happen? Well, you know, in part, um, I, I live right here in the heart of uh, this Tom Dooley legend. He was hanged just about uh, ten to fifteen minutes to the east of where I live, and the legend was born just about an hour north, up in the foothills. Uh, um, there has been uh, uh, a renewed interest in it for some reason in in the last. Uh, 10 years or so, and uh, I, I was one day I was reflecting on this Tom Dooley legend, and, and I didn't really have the, the knowledge then that, that I have now, but I, I had some. And I wanted to write a song from his perspective um, on the gallows, because he was uh, wrongly convicted of the murder of Laura Foster, and uh, that was one of his girlfriends, and uh, and he ended up paying the ultimate price for it. So I, I wanted to just bring that to people's attention. I had been telling this legend uh, at the grave of Laura Foster at this right. Happy Valley Fiddlers Convention, right. um, which is an annual event. And, and I do it at sundown uh, under candlelight. And so it's a kind of a great experience. Uh, and I go into the detail and play the two songs I wrote about the legend. Those songs aren't the uh, the ones that, you know, we probably all sang as a child and uh, and uh, got wrong. Just like uh, a lot of folklore, there's just a lot of different interpretations, yeah. but I've been very fortunate to meet a lot of the local people up there and some historians and descendants that have right. helped uh, uh, provide me with a lot of information. And then there's an author, uh, Charlotte Corbin Barnes, uh, who lives uh, just south of Charlotte, that spent uh, nearly 30 years researching this legend and went into just tremendous detail um, with her first book called The Tom Dooley Files. And, you know, Jan Kronsel from Denmark just released a book just, uh, I think it was in March, and it's called Who Killed Laura Foster? And it is, it's just a tremendously interesting book. So either one of those two books would be a great resource yeah. if someone uh, wanted to learn about the legend. 
And uh, but if they want to hear the story, the actual, the real Tom Dooley story, I made this podcast back in January, and uh, that's what it's called, the real Tom Dooley story, and it's the beginning of my uh, channel called uh, Real America History. So we'll have some more things to talk about. We'll now. certainly put, put a link up for that, Rob. I mean, I love the I love the attention to detail and, and the way you immerse yourself in in the, the songs. You know, having you know, spent an afternoon skulking around a moonshine distillery with you and uh, visiting Tom Dooley's grave as the sun went down, which was a, a somewhat disconcerting experience. It's in the corner of a field somewhere in the middle of nowhere if you anyone wants to go and look for it. Um, I really think we should, um, is there any chance you can going to play it for us? It's, it's possible. It's very it's it's possible. possible I can I can play that. And, and uh, I just tried to be Tom Dooley when I wrote the song. I just tried to tried to be him and and offer the song from his perspective. Set me free from these gallows. Cut me down from the hangman. You gotta play a song about Woody Guthrie, but where, where does he stand in your world and, and, and the music you make? Well, I, Woody Guthrie, as, as you know, wrote a, a gazillion songs and he was probably the, the, the founding father of, of folk music. He was a great inspiration to, to many of the, the, the social uh, issues that people wrote about, you know, Bob Dylan and Pete Seeger and, and so forth. And um, I was fortunate to play at the festival in, in Okemo, Oklahoma, a few years ago. When I left, I wrote the bridge for this song uh, because there was such a spirit of community there. And I think that was just something that uh, lingers on from uh, Woody Guthrie's spirit. So I, I wrote the bridge um, uh, for that song uh, right there as I was leaving. And then... Uh, I woke up a few weeks later at 7.30 in the morning and wrote the rest of it. I think we should hear it, Rob. Let's, let's have a listen. I'd love to play that for you. I 
That's a fantastic song, Rob. I, I, I think it's one of your best. Um, what age were you first aware of Woody Guthrie? Where, where, you know, does he was he was it later on in life or early on? When, when did he appear in your consciousness? Well, he appeared a couple of times. He appeared early on, and uh, you know, things when you're young, sometimes things are really moving fast. Mm -hmm. at, at least for me, they were just a, a rocket, and and I, I didn't really, I think have a, an appreciation for him until I was a little bit older and I started uh, understanding more about what he was actually saying and you know he got down in the trenches with people and traveled uh, all over the west and southwest uh, as a hobo basically and lived in uh, hobo camps and and uh, rode uh, trains with without a ticket and lived in migrant camps and and really got into the life of the everyday person and understood it and related that to everyone oh, what a tremendous gift to be able to share that with people I, I think you know listening just to you there and that is the, the big gift of you know american or that sort of american music is that capturing the stuff now as well as the past and you know i know you've done it what makes what what would you call your music i, I think i would call it folk because it, it does reach out and relate to um, just humanity and people and cultures, not just one, but cultures. And I, I think that's what, uh, what folk music uh, 
is. And, you know, it has content and, uh, you know, some, some valuable meaning, uh, as, as your music does as well. And, uh, but, uh, yeah, I think folk is where it probably should lie. Rob, on that note, thank you very much. It's been absolutely wonderful to talk to you again. You take care of yourself, my friend. Well, it's great seeing you, Steve, and uh, all the best to you. I hope to see you soon yeah. um, in person, <laughs> either here or, or over your way. So thank you uh, so much. Yeah. Our guest on the scene this episode is Charlotte Elizabeth, a music promoter and music manager working in the realms of Americana, roots and country music, starting off as a music manager quite accidentally uh, and almost falling into songwriting and co-songwriting, um, wanted to talk of her own experience and in her own words, her stubbornness and refusal to be told she can't or shouldn't do something, even in the face of great adversity. Uh, I think you'll enjoy hearing her story. She got into the country scene almost by accident, starting with a, a review of a, a gig by a local band to her, the Ash Cooper Band, who she then went on to manage. Um, being completely new to it, she was learning as she went, uh, which then led her to meeting Stuart Landon, a, a songwriter, uh, and we join Charlotte and our Steve Bonham as she tells us more about what spurred her on into this music scene. Do you know what? I need to do more with management. There's, there's so much talent on the scene that's been unrecognised that I can do so much more with. Well, I'd recovered from cancer at the time right. and I was in the middle of doing my own EP. And I'm not a songwriter. I don't class myself as a songwriter and I'm not a singer. I can't sing a note, honestly. No, I can't sing. So I don't confess to be musical in any way. But I just wanted to write about my experiences in the hope of helping somebody else who'd have cancer. So I wrote a song called Survive and I co-wrote it with Emma Moore. And I thought, actually, I can keep writing these stories and I can use the unsigned talent that we have on the scene to try and promote them a little bit more as well. That's good. So I spoke to six different artists on the scene. I wrote six different songs and recorded them into the EP Survive. And we launched it, at a, we had a sellout launch in my hometown in Stoke and it got to number four in the charts. And the rest really with that it is history. I donated all the funds that we raised to Douglas McMillan, which is our local cancer hospice. That was a really exciting time for me and it obviously got my name on the scene a little bit more, which again was unintentional. It was just a way for me to try and promote unsigned artists and a way for me to just put my feelings and how I felt into word. Yeah. But the reason it all began is because someone said to me, you're not a songwriter, you can't write, you've got no right releasing anything into the scene when you don't sing. And I thought, well, I'll just do it. I'll just do it. Yeah, and song. yeah. So my initial plan was to release Survive as a single, but it turned out that after I'd met Stuart at the Ash Cooper Band gig, we wrote Shatter Like Glass together and he came back to me the very same day with the demo and I thought, do you know what, this is a single and that's what we ran with and that was Stuart's first single. It was my first single as a co-writer and that's then what gave us our management artist relationship because yeah. we did the whole promo tour together. We went on a, I think, a 12-day radio tour together that I organised. You seem uh, amazingly uh, entrepreneurial. But what does it take to, to be you? <laughs> <laughs> I think, do you know what? I'm stubborn. That's the problem. I'm stubborn. And it's because somebody tells me I can't do something. What I wanted to do after Survive is write another EP, but I wanted to align it with writing a book. Right. So I wanted the songs to, you know, reflect through the story in the book and people have to listen to it at a certain time in the book to get the full story. And someone said, that's a ridiculous idea. You can't do it. So I was like, right, okay, off again. <laughs> What sort of things are you doing at the moment in the music industry? At the moment, I'm focusing heavily on promotion. So I'm working with Stevie Daniels at the moment on his debut single. And that's all about, you know, the promotion and the marketing and the artwork that we've done. We've done um, the press releases, lined up the interviews, the reviews. And basically, again, just going back to the start and working with someone completely new who needs that support. And obviously, we've got the podcast. We've got the Ain't Going Down podcast that um, there's another episode to come shortly, which we're doing, which caused a bit of a stir. I, I love them. I love them. We've got, to, <laughs> yeah, we've got to create a bit. If we don't create some noise. No, then... exactly. We, yeah. I mean, we had so much support from artists and promoters and festival organisers, from everybody. We had so much support. Just remind us, for those who not, didn't hear it, what was the uh, debate about? Being a radio presenter and 
you know, the quality of music that's played mm -hmm. and that you can just play anybody's music, but where's your quality control? Mm -hmm. You know, I wouldn't want my artist's music played on a radio show that was just playing anything. You know, a lot of it's out of tune or the vocals aren't good or, or what, for whatever reason, the production's bad. But it seems that some people were just playing anything. Now, we didn't name names, but some people took that quite personally. And I thought, well, why are you taking it personally? Because we've not named anybody. So if you were comfortable in what you were doing, then why would you be offended? We, we did back it up with, with a lot of positive in there as well. I mean, the most popular one we've had is what is country music. So that's the old time debate of what is country music. So we're going to keep it going, you know. I think some people probably wanted us to stop. But, you know, in parts, we were being a bit of a whistleblower. I was like, let's just say it how it is. Because I've got some stories to tell from the last six years, you know. I feel like I've been on the scene long enough to be able to say how I feel about the scene. I've seen so much in six years, yet nothing, nothing all that positive has happened to make a change. What do you think needs to happen? I think a lot of it just comes down to transparency. Everybody who's on the same level should be paid the same fixed fee. I think they should be obviously given expenses from wherever they're from, but they should be paid a fixed fee. Application processes need to be looked at. I don't think they're fair at all. I think voting processes 100% need transparency. Just professionalism. I think just be professional because there's, there's so much of that at the moment that's really not what other things would make a difference do you think in terms of getting more people involved more listeners more audience the problem is you've got people on the scene who are doing it for a living but then you've got people who are doing it as a hobby as well i, I don't know if it's just the commitment's not there and then the artists are not portraying that enough and then the fans don't buy into it i don't know if it's maybe the whole a lot of people are just dropping singles then wondering why radio isn't playing it and wondering why the fans aren't buying it or streaming it. You, you've put all this time and effort into creating art, but you're not shouting about it. So why would the fans shout about it? The recording of a single is about a third of the effort. Exactly. The hard work starts afterwards. Yeah, I mean, I always say a four week lead is, is the yeah. best way to do it because you need that pre-release and you need to shout about it and you need to do your campaign. and do videos as well as just use social media posts, do videos and interact with your audience because they want to know about you. They don't want to just hear the song. They want to know where that song came from and why it was created and the story behind it. And they want to know about you and your life. And I think that's the way you engage and that's the way you keep those followers as well. What, make, what makes you hopeful now? The majority of artists will see um, how many fans they've actually gained during lockdown yeah. because I think the t technology has really really helped social media has really helped because that's all people have had to go to so I think they'll be really eager to get back on the road so I think live venues as much as they're struggling now I think if they can just hold out for another couple of months I'm really really positive because people are going to crave live music they're going to crave getting back out there they're going to follow their favorite artists around and I think then is the time to start dropping singles and things. So I would say work on all your music now. And then as soon as we can get back out, just release a single with a four week campaign, get on the road and tour. That's totally brilliant, Charlotte. I mean, it's lovely. Um, and, uh, you know, keep keep doing what you're doing and keeping be, keep being stubborn. Because stubborn, yeah, I, I, <laughs> I think we need that. We need lots of, lots of stubborn in this world. At the moment. Yeah. Charlotte, thanks ever so much for your yeah, time and your the conversation. And now some news from our friends at Art Radio, a newly created radio station from Charlotte Elizabeth and Simon Burt. Art Radio. I've got my sensible head on. Have you? I've just changed it. Did you find it? No. You didn't find it? No. So I just had to make do with this one. It's not the greatest head I know. It's all, it, it's all it'll I've do. got. It'll it's do. all I've We need to talk about Art Radio. Right, OK, Art Radio. And what are you doing? What am I doing? Well, what's your title? What's You've got to let me grab your title. Have. So I am, I don't even know what I have. Communications Director. Uh, hey! Well, 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 social media. You are. And sponsorship and advertising. Yes. And basically, communicating with the public. Indeed, and you've designed some rather marvelous merchandise. Merchandise, yes. Which... We'll talk about later. We will, and it, we, it's coming soon then. It's coming soon. It's coming soon. It's exciting. Yeah, I know, I know. But I'm really excited. Yes. Yeah, because I'm... What are you doing? Oh, well, I'm the director. <laughs> You're the director. Of content. Oh. Which kind of means, you know, I'm someone oh, to know. Are you? I am. Are you? 
Yes. I'm very excited. No, I'm very, very excited. Because... We can't not talk about Fitz. No. Uh, the, the, the ethos of the station is much broader than American country. Yeah, of course it, it is. is. Yes. But we will be the only station in the UK the only with Bob Kingsley's country top 40. That's exciting. That's very exciting. Yeah. And very, very, very much looking forward. I, I can't wait to hear it. No, no. I, I mean, no mind, I mean, it's going to be on our station, but I can't wait to hear it. It is exciting. I think it's just it's exclusive, isn't it, to us? It's exclusive. Yeah, it's I, yeah. I love it. F-I-T with a Z. I know. That's cool. I know. Well, that should be a Z. Yes, but he's American. Yes, but he's advertising it's the British. You say Z. Yeah, well. Yeah, well. We accept, yeah. yeah. So anyway, the point of arc, it's basically to try and meet the needs of, of yeah, we, the, the needs that aren't being met, in our opinion and indeed, yeah. based on research we've done. Yeah, well, I think we, we found this, didn't we, do the mm. podcast, that there's a massive gap Huge. in the radio market, and, and we want to change it. Yeah, because when a throwback is a throwback on country radio, we should be throwing back to George Jones. Yeah. We shouldn't be throwing back to Ripcord by Keith Irwin. <laughs> no. And that's the difference. And that's the difference. And yeah. we also want to embrace more. I mean, you know, looking at the Americana artists, Bruce Springsteen will be being played. Yeah. How it's creepy to fail what a yeah, revival. Bob Dylan. You know, people yeah. that, you know, again, country radio stations wouldn't be playing these artists. No, exactly. So we're not really, we're not really saying we're a country radio station. We're just saying we're ARC. Mm -hmm. We're Americana Roots and Country. Yeah. We are in that kind of pocket, yeah. if you like, yeah. but, but, we're so much more. We are, we are more, we are more. We are more, and of course we're, we're part of uh, Steve Bonner. We, we can't not say a huge thanks to Steve Bonner. No, it's amazing. To Chris, the bishop, yeah. and indeed to the wonderful Kev Moore as well. Because yeah. obviously this is going out before Transatlantic Connections, yes. which is their own show, and if you're starring <laughs> in this very episode. Oh, I am, I am actually. Yeah, you are. Charles Elizabeth, Fame. all her glory! Fame, Fame and fortune at last, <laughs> I know, I know. But no, a huge thanks to Steve. Yeah, definitely. Um, and again, I think, I think if you look at what The Long Road do, they kind of typify what we want to do, because their music, yeah. it's salt of the earth, it's, 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 it's roots, it's... Yeah, exactly. And it's not celebrated enough. It's not, is it? It's not. And we've, we've covered this. We've covered it before. We, we've just noticed so many things that we wanted to change, mm. and now it's our chance to do that. Exactly. I think, for me, the the biggest thing that we've got going for us is that we'll be on Android app, yeah. iOS app, yeah. on the website, yeah. on Radio Box, We're on Streamer. Launching with everything, we are launching with everything. With everything you can want. Yeah. Including me. Including I mean, merch. Like I know, merch. and your merch. You've done an amazing job! Thanks. <laughs> so that's our radio. That's our radio. Uh, it is, it's, it's exciting. It launches on the 25th. Uh, what, what, what can we say very seriously? Um, all the W's dot arc radio dot online. The website isn't polished, but by all means check it out. Um, all of the socials. All of the socials. Our radio station. That's it. We are launching, as we've already said, on iOS, on Android, uh, we'll be on Simple Radio, well we are on Simple Radio, we're on Online Radio Box, yeah. uh, we'll be on all sorts of other, V Tuner and all sorts of other things, sadly not tuned in. I know, but that's... that's... We can't, they're, they're not accepting new stations at this moment. At all. And we're by no means big enough. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yet. And, well, watch this space, because Alexa may well... May well be able to yeah. play us, which is very, very yeah. exciting. Again, huge thanks to Steve, yeah. Chris, and Kev for the time in their video, Transatlantic Connections, and uh, we will, well, you'll hear us on the 25th of October. And what we're launching with? Well, it's got to be, hasn't it? CMS, yes. the Collective Music yeah. Showcase. Um, Your brand new sound for Americana, Roots, and Country. Arc Radio. We joined Kev Moore from our house band, The Long Road, for more on his trip around the southern states of the USA. Um, the first part was back in episode two, if you wanna go check that out. Kev talks about what influences his music making and it's hard not to be influenced by all sorts of different music coming from that part of the world. So I'm gonna hand you over to Kev to tell us some more. Other influences uh, are, uh, in fact, people who, who, who were friends of mine um, who, who formed an Americana band and they're, they're sort of 
explore the, the West Coast way of looking at that sort of country feel, so California country, and that's a band called Calico, and they really uh, explored it really well. There's, you know, a lot of great atmospherics in their music, some, some really nice styles, drawing on both the West Coast thing, they, they also covered a Mamas and Papas song, but also exploring those the storytelling, which I like to think we do with The Long Road, and hopefully we can feature some of that uh, during the uh, during the series. Mm -hmm. So they've sort of helped me uh, understand the American idiom a lot as well. And certain players that have stood out to me, as I've, I'm primarily a bass player, but with The Long Road I've, I've gone back to my drums as well, and uh, I play a lot more guitar, particularly uh, lead acoustic guitar. And there's one guitarist that has particularly stood out to me in that genre that I try to to emulate. I don't emulate him at all, but it, it, when I want to come up with a few sort of little ideas, when, when I recorded a version of uh, That's All Right Mama recently for our Elvis-centric programme, I try to do a little bit of what um, what this guy did. And he's a guitarist called Jim Capilongo, and I'd never heard of him until I picked up this album by The Little Willies. Um, some years ago, I was um, I was in a record shop in, in Derby, my hometown, when I was back in the UK. And the shop had this album playing while I was in there browsing, and this guitar solo came on. And I'm like, what is that? Show me that album. And it was Little Willie's, which also coincidentally features Nora Jones. And it's like her side project. Uh, and my God, it's, it's good stuff. And Jim Capilongo, I'd never heard this guy play before, but he's an instantly recognisable player. I'm going to try and just do something slightly just to give you an idea of the kind of thing I think he does. It won't be anything like it, but bear with me. So I've got my Fender-ish type guitar here. I'm going to show you a little bit of how I kind of put the solo together, then I'll just play you the solo that I did, which is in, it's inspired by Jim Capilongo, shall we say. And he kind of attacks the guitar and, and rips the notes out of it, so it's quite a bit claw-picky to me. I don't know if that's exactly what he does, so it's like that. So he's got that sort of... So it's kind of very percussive and it's like you're having to make the guitar work really hard and another thing that he does is this kind of does that a lot. Now I don't know if he uses a whammy bar, I, I've seen a little bit of him live and he just really pulls the neck so he's got that sort of that kind of vibe going on and it's it's kind of a trademark of his these kind of he hits these really strange notes sometimes going right onto the onto the pickup and then sort of dive bombing them in the weirdest places and it took me a long time to construct um, a solo that was nowhere near his standard but just to give you a, a little bit of an idea of, of uh, I wouldn't have come up with this solo without listening to Jim Capilongo whether that's a good thing or a bad thing I don't know but check it out <laughs> If I could describe his style, it's, it's probably, it's just playful, you know? I think one of the great things about um, moving through different genres, which I do a lot in my capacity as a professional musician, I, I play on a lot of different projects in a lot of different styles, is the joy of, of learning. You never stop learning, uh, particularly for me who came to actual guitar as opposed to bass quite late in life. It's a joy for me to, to discover different uh, aspects of playing and me finding my way through it without necessarily the, the tools to, to do it in my education, but I have the, the will and the imagination. So I think 
how most musicians do it really you borrow you you are inspired by other people but what comes out through your filter it ends up being uniquely your own and um I'm getting that a lot now in this particular style of music, I think. I remember when I got to Nashville, I'd never heard of Brad Paisley, for example, and that guy can, can play guitar. And uh, I started listening to him quite a bit. And yeah, I think um, there's a, a world awaits us as we, as we sort of move forward with a long road in, into um, new territory. And, and we are like the pioneers of the old West, really. We're sort of heading out there and trying to find out what there is to to learn from and to to absorb and to filter through into our music and, and present to you over over time i hope you've enjoyed listening and um there'll be more to come as we start as we begin to share our our further thoughts with you so take care and bye from me so that's it for this episode of the transatlantic connection show thank you for watching wherever in the world you are Remember, please subscribe to the channel, like this video if you liked it, uh, and share it with a pal who you think might like it too. The next episode will be out on Tuesday the 27th of October 2020. Uh, if you enjoyed this show, you might enjoy our podcast too. It's called The Vagabond Way Podcast, and is available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, SoundCloud, Amazon Podcasts. Just search for The Vagabond Way Podcast and you'll find us. Don't forget, we're on Patreon at patreon.com slash thevagabondway. Big thank you to our Patreons and a special shout out to Orla Flynn, James Lydon, Stuart Lydon, Yvette Lydon and Trish Taylor. Thank you for your ongoing support. Patreon is a great platform that makes it super easy for anyone out there, you, to support content that you love on a monthly basis. It gives you direct access to the people creating the stuff you love, us, hopefully, uh, and you get to play an integral part in shaping the direction of the things that we make. So become a vagabonder. That's our name for our supporters on Patreon to help us create music, live performances, books and short stories, this weekly YouTube show, our podcast, and some new things we're cooking up. As a vagabonder, you can get the recordings and books we make for free, receive exclusive Patreon-only merchandise in the post, get regular behind-the-scenes updates from us, unlock access to exclusive live stream performances and Q&As, and lots more. You can help us create something different, something that entertains, and something that inspires others. So, join us on the journey and release the vagabond within patreon.com slash the vagabond way so until next time keep making those transatlantic connections bye for now